Hey, hey, I'm back. You know, I told you I've been thinking, thinking, thinking. That's all my mind does. And I'm on all this medication and steroids and stuff, so my mind is just gone. But you know what? I'm thinking, you know, we have this problem at the border. And all these kids of people coming here, you know, trying to find a better life. And Texas was Mexico at one time. So these people are really in their own country. So, but how come the United States don't move their own borders back 10 miles? Or five, I don't know, five miles. But we still own the property where they are. We just... We're not expanding Mexico's border, but we're moving hours back, but we still own that land. And then what we could do is put in uh, facilities for work and growing food, peace, where these people don't have to run from the cartels or poverty. And we kind of maintain that area. It's kind of like the neutral zone or the demilitarized zone. They could do that. And, and, People, I know it would be overcrowded pretty soon, but once those people start making money and being able to take care of themselves, and they will still be under the United States jurisdiction because it's still the United States. How come, I don't know, that's just me. <laughs> I told you, I think. But I think that's a good thought. I don't know how, you know, I mean, you can't text the White House or what is his name, Jim, I mean, <laughs> Biden, <laughs> uh, Kamala, but they could do that. The uh, United States could do whatever they want to do because it's their land. Just, you know, move the fence, uh, the border back five miles or 10 miles. And these people are in America, but it's, it looks like Mexico, but they don't, they, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? I wish they could do that. And, you know, treat them like they're American citizens, but they could. They can't go past the the new border. You can't go past this part. Uh, when we move our borders back, you can't come over that part. We're just gonna make your life better, right around the edges. So, I don't know. They might not do that, but it's better than doing nothing. You're spending billions of dollars trying to house these people, and you know, build them a school and give them a clinic and. You know, take care of them just like they Americans, because uh, anyway, that's this medicine. <laughs> I'm fixing to take, look here, take another pill to bring the steroids boost you up. So now you take a sedative to bring you back down. I, I have been on some up and down, you know, trying to get my head together. You know, I know it's a process, the grieving and all that. It is a process, but I'm getting better. I remember when my mother died in 1971, and I cried every day for three years. And the tears kind of dried up when I gave birth to my my son in 1974. Oh, let me show y'all something. Hold on. This is, let's see if you can see it. I'm going to pull it up close. I hope it comes out clear. That's my son, Keith, and his other dog named CJ. He loved his dogs. These dogs were, this dog uh, is a was a support animal, a service animal, because Keith had a, a lot of, injuries to his brain from playing so much football and he just had a lot of stuff going on but cj all both his dogs are sweet but i couldn't keep them I, I, no way i got sunny and i can't walk those dogs they would drag me but that's my baby and if somebody know how to pass a message on I mean, White House gets stupid messages all day, but you know, we could do that. Make them people think they're in the United States, which they are, but they're not in the real United States. Sub-heaven, that's what it is. Anyway, I'm gone. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Bye.